chapter 1, the exigency of this message, sanctity defined. Sanctity is the sacredness, holiness of life, an indivisible thing. It is that thing which cannot be violated. It is and involves holy obligations and rights. Something sanctified is that which is set apart to God, that which is different, made completely unique and peculiar in the heart of God, ordained and sanctified by God. We are sanctified by his word, living his word. As it is written, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. John chapter 17 verse 17. A marriage as an indivisible union should exist to hallow the name of the Lord. And when that sacred union is put asunder in contradiction to the intent of the Creator, especially among Christians, the name of the Lord is blasphemed among the heathen. The Lord commands us to do all things in perfect order as our Heavenly Father is. In so doing, we may be true children of God. See Matthew chapter 5 verse 44 and 45 and 1 John chapter 3 verses 3 to 10. As the Lord commanded us, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. As Christians, our marriage must of necessity be distinguished from the world marriage order. For although we are in the world, we are not of the world. As the apostles Paul and Peter wrote in their respective epistles, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. For we are what we do and not what we merely profess to be. Therefore, if Christians in marriage relationships conduct themselves as unbelievers do, they are unbelievers. Without spiritual understanding of the sanctity and the mystery of the union that God has formed, we will always have problems in marriage. The mystery of how God started this sacred union marriage, the way he did, and why he has decreed that nobody should put it asunder. The grossly callous indifference toward marriage nowadays, the almost erosion of the sanctity of same, the world relegation of marriage to a mere social contract, which is subject to repudiation at will, and the epidemic dissolution of that which is the oldest and sacred institution of God, makes the issue of this message exigent, a matter to be viewed with utmost concern and urgency by all true children of God. With the deadly combination of erosion of marriage and family values and worldly promotion and exaltation of immoral lifestyle, it is a rarity these days to find a lasting spirit-rooted marriage. These days, our wicked, crooked, perverse, deluded, and recalcitrant generation promotes, esteems, and glamorizes same-sex marriage and the hopping from one spouse to another, even on a yearly basis, as in trading an old car for a seemingly new one. A family court observation and review of marriage dissolution rates and reasons, therefore, will send a shock wave to the spine of everyone who is truly born of God. 
Just on a daily basis, each family courtroom is filled to overflowing capacity. In most jurisdictions in the United States, one can successfully petition a court for the dissolution of his or her marriage for no cause at all, other than a simple desire to get out of the marriage for a new pasture. For example, a general and unsubstantiated claim that the marriage has become insupportable because of discord or conflict of personalities that destroys the legitimate ends of the marriage relationship and prevents any reasonable expectation of reconciliation is a sufficient ground to obtain dissolution of a marriage. Sadly, in most cases, the petitioner could hardly wait for the final divorce decree to be entered before he or she runs off with the co-conspirator in the defilement of the previous marriage to celebrate their freedom, in quotes. It is very sad indeed that majority of these culprits profess themselves to be good Christians, in quote, who casually frown and wave off any notion of the sanctity of marriage as they justify their ungodly conduct by asserting an immunity clause under an umbrella grace of God. They conclude and fiercely defend the doctrine of one saved, always saved, regardless of the lifestyle they choose to live. According to them, God knows and understands, in quotes, that times have changed. They argue that Christians ought to flow with the current tide of traditions of the world. We should be on the side of history, not on God's side, they say. However, they forget to their detriment that God is the Ancient of Days. He changes not, and he is not a respecter of anyone. As it is written, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of Lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. James chapter 1 verse 17. Again, and if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 17. It is therefore exigent for us to consider and mend our ways today before it is too late. We must strive to redeem the time now while we have breath. For tomorrow, even the next second, will ever remain unknown and uncertain to us. For one cannot claim to be a Christian and still lives a life contrary to the gospel and doctrine of Christ. As it is written, If you love me, keep my commandments. John chapter 14 verse 15. It means that those who do not keep his commandments neither love him, nor are they his followers or disciples. See John chapter 14, verses 23 and 24. Again, it is written, You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. John chapter 15, verse 14. And again, Now, by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. The one we love is the one we obey, and the one we obey is our true master. And we obviously cannot serve two masters. See Luke chapter 16, verse 13, John chapter 8, verse 34, Romans chapter 6, verse 16, and 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. And what did the Lord command his elect relative to the sanctity of marriage? And I say to whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. 
Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. It obviously would be reminiscent of me to ever think I am better than anyone or that I am remotely qualified to judge or condemn anyone. But I am willing and praying to the Lord to help me perpetually go and sin no more by living a life always pleasing to him. Nonetheless, I permit myself to state here that this message is intended for those who are born of God and transformed by his spirit, the elect of God, who are given to understand and appreciate God's bitter truth. It is for those who are very hungry and desirous to enter God's rest. When his disciples exhibited total lack of understanding of the parable of the sower, the Lord expressly stated to them thus, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Matthew chapter 13 verse 11. Again, as the Lord said, The truth shall set us free if we know, that is, live the truth. And once the scales have been taken off our eyes to know and understand the truth, we would have no more excuse if we choose to reject the truth. See John chapter 8 verse 32 and chapter 15 verse 22. As it is written, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Romans chapter 1 verses 18 to 20. If we live as unbelievers do, we are unbelievers, for we are what we do, not what we say. A true believer in Christ is known by his or her works, just as a tree is known by its fruits. What we do bears true witness of who we are. Therefore, if we share the same attitude towards marriage relationship as the people of the world, we are certainly of the world. As it is written, even a child is known by his deeds, whether what he does is pure and right. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 11. Again, therefore by their fruits you will know them. Matthew chapter 7 verse 20. And again, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. John chapter 10 verse 25. I strongly believe that most ills confronting our present society, including adolescent rebellion and disrespect of parents and authority, are traceably linked to breakdown in marriage or families and morals. I must equally state that most, if not all marital problems, I dare to say, are as a result of one or the two parties operating on a different spiritual frequency from the other, contrary to the word of God. But if we live the word of God, the kingdom will certainly be within us and our marriages will become as heaven on earth. Amen. Amen.